The controversy over cashless tolls continues, particularly at the Mario and Cuomo Bridge and along the New York State Thruway. Thousands of dollars in fines owed, cars impounded and towed. Fios One and the Journal News have been working on the story together, and for more, we turn to Fios One reporter Ray Romundi. It turned out it was not a mistake. My registration was suspended. Um, she said, well, you owe $12,000. And I also lost a day of work. The system is, is problematic. What you're listening to is four women whose lives were changed forever. After they drove past this cashless toll plaza under the cameras that take photos of license plates and others across the tri-state area. For mother of two, Ashley Delgado, her registration was suspended after the Thruway Authority says she owed $3,500 in fines. I was again just really confused because I never got the bill. Her car taken away by police as a result of the debt. She says she now pays $50 a day just to get to work and has trouble just going to the supermarket or even doing laundry. There is no card for me to swipe. There are no parents for me to call and borrow the money so that I can settle it before it gets worse. I paid $150 in February. I, I was paying. And then there's Dolores Ritchie's story, who says at one point a collection agency says she owed $12,000 in fines. Dolores says the amount accrued despite her paying the tolls consistently and sometimes over the amount. I don't have easy pass. They mail you the bill. Now, they mail you the bill two months to three months later, but by the time you get that bill, they already took that $5 and charged you $100. Our car is down there. This is where we get dropped. This is my grandma, 79 years old. This video taken by Richie's daughter shows the night Dolores' car was snatched away because of her suspended registration. It was 2 in the morning on Thanksgiving Day. Her elderly mother and two children left stranded on a Bronx street miles away from home. I felt like I let my children down and my elderly mother down. I'm the protector right now, and I didn't feel like I was protecting them. Dolores and Ashley's troubles uncovered by Journal News investigative reporters Chris Eberhardt and Peter Kramer. We've heard from dozens and dozens and hundreds of people who've said that they've had issues with this system. Right. And the fact that they don't have a recourse, they feel like they're powerless in the system. A system which Kramer and Eberhardt say has an incredible backlog. That backlog causing the toll bills to be sent out months after the transaction. The $5 toll and then it ends up being a $100 violation. The people that we started interviewing, it was more than that. It, it, it started ruining their whole lives. The Thruway Authority has acknowledged that there's a problem here and they've launched a foolproof plan in order to end confusion. Part of that plan includes creating a website, the amnesty program, and ensuring that there are clear and concise signs all across the roadways. The six-point action plan. So we launched the amnesty program, uh, installed new and improved signage. We've reissued uh, new. There will be a new toll bill. Thruway Authority Executive Director Matt Driscoll explaining measures the authority is taking to address the laundry list of concerns during a town hall forum hosted by the Journal News. I also lost a day of work because I work on commission, and if I'm not in the office, I'm not doing what I need to be doing. It was bad. But then there are drivers like Janet Berg, who had to tap into her IRA in order to pay a staggering $5,000 bill as the ongoing saga of the cashless toll crisis continues and that lingering question as to whether a solution is in the future for a program which was supposed to be so easy. In Rockland County, Ray Ray Mundy, Fios One News. Now in Ray's piece, we heard from Journal News reporters Peter Kramer and Chris Eberhardt. Rich spoke with them yesterday. Guys, I thought, you know, from at least what I've read, largely from your guys' reporting, that it was bad, obviously, the, how the cashless toll system has worked and more aptly hasn't worked. But when I read the story about Dolores Ritchie, oh my God. Uh, I, I mean, do you chalk this up to that there are a lot of other stories, not just like hers, as, as egregious as hers? Or is she an anomaly here where maybe cops uh, took this way too far that night? Well, Chris and I met with Dolores. Chris had been working his story, you know, has been working his story for months, and we keep hearing more and more folks. Uh, the stories that we're going to read, you're re going to read this week, are really bad. Uh, Dolores's is really bad. I mean, you think about Thanksgiving morning, 2 a.m., with your 79-year-old mother and your two college-age kids left in the Bronx, 30 miles from home, 
Uh, it doesn't get much worse than no. that. Um, um, but and, and we've kind of been talking about how uh, who's to blame here, and and there's a lot of blame to go around. But I th I think these stories, there are going to be more of them. There are more people who've been affected by this than than people want to let on. Uh, and 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 Ray asked me earlier, you know, is this, um, you know, he he said kind of, is this as bad as it really looks? And I'm I think my answer was something like, a system that doesn't work for everybody doesn't work well. Um, and, and I think that's really kind of the point of it, is that, is that this system failed Dolores and Ashley and Janet and these other people that we're going to hear about this weekend. Um, and Dolores, um, law-abiding citizen here, this isn't somebody that's a scoff law, has got a rap sheet. And my point that I got from reading your reporting, guys, is if it can happen to her, it can happen to anybody. Mm -hmm. She had been paying systematically her bills as well, sometimes even paying in advance mm -hmm. uh, or overpaying, if you will. So I, I imagine you guys have to be proven right here about the volume of it. Is it, is it that the system is just so backed up um, and so mismanaged? Uh, or is it that you know people largely have been avoiding paying these because they thought they were basically getting a free ride? Well, I don't think people were avoiding them. I think they, they just weren't getting, like, the bills. So, like, they send you three, and the only time that they're getting anything was the third one when each $5 toll is getting attached to a $100 fine, or they're getting something from collection agencies. Um, as to who's to blame, we're still not sure, but it, it's, uh, you know, I, I don't th people want to pay it. And every time that we talk to somebody and we hear from people, they say that we want to pay the bill. We're used to either when they had the toll, when they had the toll takers, they would put money aside and just, you know, give the $5 tolls every time. Um, so they, they want to pay it. And the other thing I've gotten from your guys' reporting is this wasn't an unforeseen problem. In Texas and other places where they put this in place, there has always been uh, the beginning um, where there has been mass confusion here, um, all of a sudden notices when people weren't even expecting that there'd be problems. Where was the foresight here? Well, there was foresight in Texas and there was foresight in California. The foresight just never made its way to New York. Uh, and, and Richard, I think that that's a great point because the point of this is that the, the Mario Cuomo Bridge is going to be the start of rolling this out all the way to Buffalo. Yep. Uh, and the governor has been really clear that he really likes this system. It's working. It's in place. There's nothing wrong with it. And we've our reporting, Chris's reporting, and everybody's reporting on this has shown that there are there are problems here. Could what happened to Dolores right before Thanksgiving happen today okay. to somebody um, on President's Day weekend? Mm -hmm. My point is, has the messaging got to all parties involved? If somebody you know has unpaid, which then led to the suspended registration, whatever mm -hmm. else. Don't uh, throw these people on the side of the road and confiscate their car. Is there yeah. going to be a grace period now, even if they don't take advantage of the amnesty program? I don't think we know that. I don't know. We don't know that yet. We, wow. uh, the uh, the amnesty program ends at the end of the month. Uh, February is a short month. <laughs> we'll have to see where they're going. But I, I think that um, to whatever extent we can get out the word that the amnesty program is here, and we're going to have a drumbeat, you know, up yep. until the end of it, let people know. Uh, but. A lot of it is about not knowing, though, Richard. I mean, a lot of people don't know. They don't need, know that you need to let the DMV know within 10 days of changing your address. That's something that, that bit uh, Ashley Delgado, who uh, will be in the paper. I didn't Sunday. know until I read your article that you have to do that. Richard uh, French did not I know did that? I did not know My that. My goodness. <laughs> and, and I've got easy pass. Don't come after me. Um, but, but again, I come back to that woman's experience. Yes. From her account, not only her 79-year-old mother here being let out, her kids just home from school, right. and a cop talking to her with his hand on the butt of his revolver right. um, over a ticket that she didn't even know she had I, unpaid. I reached out to the MTA, uh, who handles the Triborough uh, Bridge and Tunnel Authority Police, which is the RFK Bridge, and I said, is this, is this the way it's supposed to work? When somebody is pulled over and their car is taken, uh, is there no... What are you supposed to do? You're supposed to leave them on the side of 138th Street in the right. Bronx at 2 a.m. on Thanksgiving morning, <laughs> and and the answer was basically we get them to a safe place. Oh, nobody got the memo that night. I guess not. Jeez. Anyway, great reporting, guys. I know you guys have been on this story and will continue to be here. And again, we've put up some of the information for people to pursue the amnesty program that I know is on the front page of your paper just about every day. Uh, thanks again. Thanks. And you can read more about the problems with the cashless tolling system as well as some of those horror stories that we were spotlighting right now on loha.com. They'll also appear in print in this Sunday's Journal News.
Up next, we've got an update from the courtroom in the Prococo corruption trial, and we're going to discuss somebody who's been talked about a lot, even though he's not accused of anything. I'm talking about the man on the right of your screen, Governor Cuomo.